Okay, all right. So in this video, we're gonna be reacting to uh, the truth about RU58841, hair loss prevention for men and women. This is a video that I came across in my suggested feed, and I recently made a video about topical anti-androgens, including RU58841, so I thought it would be an interesting video to react to. So let's get into it. The most common drug prescribed for the prevention of hair loss is called finasteride otherwise known as Propecia, and it is certainly effective at slowing hair loss in most men. Unfortunately, recent clinical studies have revealed that long-term use of finasteride can lead to irreversible side effects. And because of that, many men are now looking for an alternative that actually has proven results based on academic research. No, I'm not talking about some random all-natural botanical theorem that you've probably seen on Instagram because that probably does nothing. Okay, so Regen RX. Uh, first impressions, I like the way this guy's dressing. He looks really professional. Uh, the setup looks really good. Um, he's talking about the post finasteride syndrome here, which I've made a video about before. Um, definitely an issue to consider, especially if you're someone with a lower risk tolerance. But at the end of the day, this is an incredibly rare side effect. It's only been demonstrated in observational studies. So it, it happens so rarely that if you run a randomized control trial, you don't even see it. Um, but it definitely is something to consider. Uh, and then he also mentions that natural health products don't work, which I uh, agree with. What's up, guys? I'm Dr. Adam Watson, and today we're diving into the research behind RU58841, which is a topical anti-androgen that has emerged as an alternative to finasteride. RU58841 was actually developed almost 40 years ago by a pharmaceutical company in France and it belongs to a class of compounds called non-steroidal anti-androgens. Because of its low molecular weight, it can easily be absorbed through the skin, which means that topical application on the scalp is the best way to deliver it to your hair follicles. Multiple studies have shown that it can increase hair length and hair density with comparable results to finasteride. The difference between the two is when it comes to side effects. Finasteride is known to cause a range of bothersome side effects, including sexual dis- Okay, so here is where I start to disagree with, uh, with this video. So. Um, the individual says that finasteride and RU58841 have similar efficacy. The difference is that RU has a better safety profile. And the thing is, this just isn't true at all. And it's not true because RU58841 has not been studied in humans. It's only been studied in animal models. And if you pull up your evidence hierarchy, you know that animal models are at the bottom of the hierarchy. You can't use outcomes from animal studies to make clinical decisions. Okay. So RU is supported by outcomes from animal studies. On the other hand, finasteride is supported by outcomes from human studies and not just any human studies, but randomized control trials and systematic reviews and meta-analyses of randomized control trials. So the highest level of evidence supports the safety and efficacy of finasteride. So much so that finasteride has received FDA approval for treating both prostate enlargement and also treating male pattern hair loss. So just because we don't know the safety profile of RU doesn't mean it's safer than finasteride, it just means we don't know the safety profile of RU, right? For all we know, if we exposed, you know, a million men to RU58841, uh, there might be some kind of post-RU syndrome, which happens at a much higher frequency than post-finasteride syndrome, right? So we don't really know until we run the human studies. Another thing that I'll mention is that RU is part of a class of molecule called non-steroidal anti-androgens, and these molecules are used for the purposes of treating aggressive prostate cancer. When it comes to balancing the risk and benefits of a treatment, uh, a treatment for uh, prostate cancer, which is a deadly disease, is obviously going to be able to have more side effects than a treatment for hair loss, right? When we're talking about saving someone's life or prolonging their life, we're willing to tolerate a whole bunch of extra side effects. And if you take a look at the product monographs of other types of uh, non-steroidal antiandrogens like flutamide, like bicalutamide, like enzalutamide, you see a whole bunch of side effects that you don't see when it comes to molecules like finasteride and like dutasteride, which are used for treating hair loss. Dysfunction. Even worse, clinical research has revealed that sexual dysfunction caused by finasteride is permanent in some men. And I'll drop a link below so you can read the study for yourself. In fact, there's an increase in a troubling phenomenon called post-finasteride syndrome that affects young men in particular. So why risk it? Part of the problem with finasteride, even in topical form rather than pill form, is that it has an exceedingly low... So he's talking about the post-finasteride syndrome again. Uh, so again, this is a pretty rare side effect, not saying it doesn't exist but it's really difficult to prove that it's a, that it does exist and a lot of uh, doctors and other 
uh, you know, healthcare workers and experts are a little bit skeptical about post finasteride syndrome, to be honest, just because it doesn't really happen at a very high frequency. And these types of symptoms that are described within uh, post finasteride syndrome, like depression, anxiety, sexual dysfunction, brain fog, these types of symptoms can happen for a whole bunch of other psychiatric reasons, right? So post finasteride syndrome, definitely a terrible side effect, something to consider if, if you're considering using finasteride. And if you have a lower risk tolerance, that might be something that dissuades you from using finasteride, but it's not something to freak out about life, which causes persistent systemic effects throughout your body for a long time. In contrast, RU58841 has a much shorter half-life in the body, which reduces the potential for unwanted systemic effects. Basically, it's applied to the scalp, it works with the scalp, and by the time it gets absorbed deeper and circulates throughout the body, much of it has already been metabolized, so it's no longer active. Of course, there are plenty of men who are currently using finasteride who don't experience any side effects, and that's great. But they also So here he's using uh, properties of the molecule, so in this case, uh, half-life, to support the notion that RU is safer than finasteride. So again, this is something that's very unethical. Um, we really don't know. So one of the principles of medicine is that we don't know how the human body works, right? We don't. The only way to know if a particular drug is safe is to expose enough people to the product um, and expose some other people to some type of control or placebo follow them over time and see what types of safety outcomes occur and then use uh, statistical tools to determine whether or not the safety outcomes are caused by the treatment or if they're just caused by chance. So th these are called randomized control trials. They're really one of the only tools that we have to actually know if a particular intervention is safe and effective. And because no randomized control trials have been run with RU, uh, we really don't know if it's safe or effective. I mean, it's interesting that it has low molecular weight. It's interesting that it has a low half-life, but you can't use these molecular properties to suggest that this molecule is safe for human use. So don't necessarily experience full prevention of hair loss, and those men are typically looking for something to boost their hair restoration strategy. This is why there is still a need for ongoing research into androgenic alopecia, which is the most common cause of age-associated hair loss. Going forward, the goal for researchers is to determine the most comprehensive strategy to reduce hair loss using a combination therapy approach. The majority of gradual hair loss experienced by both men and women is caused by DHT, which is a form of testosterone. DHT causes hair follicles to shrink, ultimately leading to the point that they can no longer support the growth of a strong hair shaft. In addition, hair follicles exist in a state of equilibrium between growth and rest. Normally, about 90% of your hair is in a growth phase called anagen, and about 10% is in a dormant phase, which lasts for about four months before new hair growth. However, if you're losing hair over time, those ratios are probably out of balance, so your hair shafts will become too weak and they're more prone to breaking. Fortunately, RU58841 is effective because it targets both those issues. It increases the diameter of individual hairs, which makes them more resilient, and it increases the proportion of hair in the- So now he's claiming that RU does these two things. It increases the diameter of hairs, and it increases the number of hairs in the antigen growth phase. But does it do this in humans? We don't know because it hasn't been studied in humans. Okay, so he's going to be talking about some animal studies, and animal studies are super interesting. You know, animal studies are an important part of the drug development process, but outcomes from animal studies should be used to inform future studies in humans, right? That's what they're for. You do your preclinical animal studies first, and then you use the results from that study to decide how you wanna run your phase one studies and phase two studies, right? So what I, what I think he's doing here is, I, I think it's a little bit misleading what he has here. Antigen growth phase. Let's take a look at a couple of the preclinical studies of RU58841 to see just how it stocks up. Back in 1998, researchers at the University of Rochester in New York used a primate model of male pattern baldness to evaluate how RU58841 affects hair growth cycles. Before treatment, the average hair follicle length was measured to be less than one millimeter, and most of the follicles were in the telogen resting phase. However, after five months of topical treatment, the average hair follicle length increased by 25%, and the majority of hair follicles shifted into the antigen growth phase. 10 years later, in 2008, researchers in France evaluated RU58841 on human hair that was grafted from balding men. In this study, they chose to quantify the speed of hair growth and the thickness of individual hairs microscopically over six months of treatment. What they determined was that RU58841 significantly increased the speed of hair growth by 20% after two months, and the thickness of hair shafts increased by 200% after six months. So he talked about some animal studies. Again, you know, very interesting. Um, the results look promising, but these results should be used to inform human studies. They should not be used to sell a product, right? It's not ready for prime time. 
Fortunately, for most men with only moderate hair loss, the initial results can be seen visibly in as little as three months, especially if RU584-1 is used in tandem with something else rather than on its own. So now he's making claims about onset. Um, you know, until you run human studies, like I said, you can't really make claims about onset. You don't know how quickly it's going to work. It's important to remember that RU584-1 works in a fundamentally different way than finasteride because it blocks the activity of DHT, whereas finasteride only slows the production of DHT. This difference in their mechanism of action also supports using both compounds simultaneously for maximum overall inhibition of DHT, attacking it from two different angles. Okay, so I actually agree with him on that point. He's talking about how 5-alpha um, reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride prevent production of dihydrotestosterone by inhibiting the enzyme 5-alpha reductase whereas an antiandrogen would actually block the androgen receptor, um, but essentially both of them are decreasing androgenic activity in the hair follicle uh, through two different mechanisms of action. And basically by doing this, you're able to attack hair loss from two different angles, and they should be able to work in a synergistic way, so that if you use finasteride plus RU58841, you would be able to have better efficacy outcomes compared to using finasteride by itself. And, you know, th theoretically, this is sound. I, you know, I agree with it on paper. Um, but again, you can't make this claim until you've actually ran a clinical study where you've compared combination uh, treatments to uh, monotherapy with each agent on its own. And we've seen these types of studies done with minoxidil, right? We know that minoxidil plus finasteride is better than finasteride by itself, which is better than minoxidil by itself. But we, we haven't done the study with uh, any type of topical antiandrogen, including RU58841. Lastly, let's consider cost. RU58841 had a higher price point up until about 2014, but then the Royal Society of Chemistry published a new approach to chemical synthesis, which was much more efficient. And its technological advance lowered the price of the raw product, so topical solutions of RU58841 are now on par with topical finasteride in terms of cost per bottle. Please remember that RU58841 is still investigational and more research is underway. Okay, so he acknowledges that this is an investigational compound, which is which is good, but I don't like how this video is framed because it's kind of framed in a way like if I was watching this video, I would think that this guy was was a doctor or some type of medical professional and he was breaking down research and, you know, evidence-based information about a particular pharmaceutical product and he was making some type of uh, medical recommendation. Like that's the type of video that this seems like. So Although he does acknowledge that this is an experimental research chemical, uh, just the whole way this video is formatted is kind of misleading in my opinion. And it's especially unethical because this uh, video is made by a company that actually sells RU58841. You can see over here, when you go to their website, they sell it. And um, while you know, I do think that people should have the option of using more you know, potentially dangerous experimental uh, treatments in order to have better efficacy outcomes potentially I think you should be allowed to do that if you like I don't I don't think people should be misled and I think people should really understand what they're getting themselves into so just the fact that uh, this video seems like some type of medical video and it's made by the company that actually sell this this product um, is just you know not the most ethical way of doing this in my opinion for more information on the signs of hair loss and hair restoration, head over to regenerex.org and check out all of the science content. Thanks for watching. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you guys like this reaction video. This is, I guess, the first reaction video I'm doing. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more reaction videos or if you want uh, me to react to a particular video, you can let me know in the comment section as well. Uh, I actually quite like these videos, both watching them, you know, like people like uh, like Derek from More Place, More Dates. I really enjoy watching a lot of his reaction videos. Um, and they're also easier to make. They, they don't really take as much time to make compared to just a purely informational video. So I, I really do like making these videos. So, you know, thank you guys again for watching. If you guys are, you know, live in the greater Toronto area, feel free to visit a new pharmacy that uh, my colleagues and I are opening. Um, it's called Surrey Victoria Park Pharmacy, and it's going to be located at, uh, <laughs> I always forget the address. Yeah, so right over here. Um, it's going to be located at 1703 Victoria Park Pharmacy. There's a medical clinic, and if, when you go into the medical clinic, that's where the pharmacy is going to be. Um, we're anticipating that it will be opening in early September, so like September 8th. So if you live around that area and you're looking to fill prescriptions, feel free to drop by. Uh, I will be working there myself, but also my colleagues will also be working there. 
one of my colleagues, Walter, he's a diabetes expert. Chris is a, a hospital pharmacist. Both of them have been doing this stuff for a very long time and have a lot of experience in this field. So if you have any questions about your medications, if you want to fill some prescriptions, uh, feel free to visit our drugstore. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.